Mathematics truly is a superpower. It allows us to take this tiny brain that nature gave us, a brain that can't even understand the difference between 9 and 10 objects, for example, and use that brain to come to generalizations about the entire universe in just one sentence. And this power has allowed us to ascend from the swamp to the stars. It truly is amazing. Our lives are longer and better because of the power it has given us. But this power will forever elude us if we're unable to connect mathematics to real life, unless we're able to apply it to the betterment of our lives. And unfortunately, our means of understanding mathematics has been deductive logic, a system that uses ideas to prove other ideas and doesn't really prove ideas using the observations that actually gave rise to them. As a result, we tend to think of mathematics as a kind of shadow that was cast from some sort of world that's beautiful but far from this one. But mathematics is not about another world. It was invented to describe this world. And in order to understand its connection to this world, we have to be able to derive it from observations of this world. And so that's what the purpose of this series is. In this series, we will attempt to derive mathematics, not deductively from other ideas, but inductively from observations. Now, observations on their own are not enough. You can't just look at a picture of a right triangle and have the Pythagorean theorem pop into your head. It doesn't work that way. A generalization as important as this one requires a long chain of abstract connections in addition to observations. So as a result, we have to go in the right order, an order where each idea we've established in previous proofs allows us to understand the observations required for our current proof. And the key to this is going roughly in historical order because mankind has already figured this out once. We've already derived, we've already gone in the proper order once, being able to use our current knowledge to understand new observations. We just have to reconstruct the exact connections, or not necessarily the exact connections, but the connections that could have happened in a historical order. As a result, my proofs will not take the form of dry theorems, but will take the form of stories. Stories about characters facing real-life problems. For example, how do I split this bread up equally for my family? Or should I fight or flee from this advancing army? How many people do we have? How many people do they have? That's a mathematical problem that requires mathematical reasoning to solve. And so these stories will give us a sense of the purpose of mathematics so that we can actually connect these ideas to real life and use them towards the betterment of our lives. It'll give us a sense of the observations required to understand these mathematical ideas. And it will give us the reasoning steps required to integrate those observations into abstract ideas for use in later applications. So I hope you'll join me on this series of videos as we go one step at a time, starting at the most basic mathematical abstractions and working our way all the way up to Newton's ideas of forces and gravity, and hopefully even beyond, demonstrating a new form of inductive logic, which will allow us to systematize all of our scientific knowledge. I'll see you in my first video.